to destroy all worlds. They had erased his universe with a press release, murdered those he considered friends and family with nothing but a headline. Disney erases the expanded universe from Star Wars continuity. Bobby Phelps' initial reaction was to slip into a catatonic state, his mind and body's meager attempt to insulate him from the awareness that he'd wasted two and a half decades of his life following a now lifeless dimension. He dropped to the floor, the organic streaky crust formed on both sides of his underwear breaking his fall. Later, he would only regret that instead of taking those first moments to hit the message boards and rally the fan community, he had lain sprawled upon the floor in a pool of his own drool and piss. The piss pool was a better use of his time. His compatriots at the comic book store had been no more uplifting. Fucking Lucas, that salt and pepper fuck! Stevie Riggs yelled. I told you, man, once they took the license back from Dark Horse, that was the beginning of the end. Stevie routinely demonstrated more knowledge of the various legal apparatuses of corporate licensing than he ever demonstrated knowledge of the human heart. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me, Donald James muttered, shoving his parents' divorce to the number two spot. <laughs> Eddie Collins, who claimed to be in a psychic metafictional marriage with the happen warrior princess Jedi Tenoka, sat crying over a stack of Justice League Detroit back issues. <laughs> they killed her, he sobbed. She's dead, and I didn't even get a chance to say an incontinuity goodbye. The store's owner callously ordered him to shed his tears over a pile of books nobody cared about in the independent press section. <laughs> they owe us, Bobby yelled, preserving the covenant between uncaring corporate interests and entitled fans. We've supported Lucas for all this time, and we deserve better. Well, the upside is that they can start fresh without decades worth of contradicting storyline bogging them down said a woman no one recognized who'd overheard the conversation. <laughs> After all, for every good expanded universe story, there were five dark sabers. They looked her over, spending most of that time focused on these small yet perky breasts, which were covered by a homemade Magneto was right t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Fake, Donald yelled. Fake geek girl, Stevie added. <laughs> Do you even know who General Thrawn is? Bobby asked, not waiting for her, uh, an answer before lobbing more questions at her. What about Dash Rendar? I bet you can't tell an IG-86 IG from an IG-88. My wife is dead! Eddie Collins screamed. <laughs> the woman left before a replica of Thor's hammer could be lobbed at her head. When Tricky Dean a nerd so pale that you could see every individual surface vein in his thin, sickly body came by to gloat. The fanboys nearly went to blows. You Star Wars twats dumped on me so hard for the original series being shunted to the background for an alternate timeline, and now what have you got? Not even a triple's worth of shit left in your stupid cannon. <laughs> Eddie had to be restrained before he could rip the plastic Vulcan ears out from under Trekkie Dean's stupid bowl cut. But it all stopped when he entered the store. Ken Miller was a creep's creep. The kind of creeps that other creeps looked at and went, Man, that's a creep. <laughs> he would loudly discuss intercontinuity slash pairings. How hard a ninja turtle would kiss a samurai pizza cat. <laughs> if ultimate Captain America would be a power top for the comparatively mild bottom of 616 universe Captain America. <laughs> Ken would proudly display his portfolio of drawings, a variety of Japanese cat girls in salacious poses, the figures often being 60% more cat than is comfortable. <laughs> you need to open your eyes, he said in that low, froggy tone of his. You think the expanded universe has been taken from you, but they've given it to you. All you have to do is reach out and take it. Uh, how? Eddie Collins asked. Don't listen to him, Eddie, Stevie said. This guy's a worm tongue. A pure extended edition worm tongue. Silence, fool, Ken shouted. It's all there for you in the world of fan fiction, Eddie. There's no more novels to get in your way. No more Wookiees dying for the sins of others. You and Tenoka can be together, 
writhing in infinite pleasure upon the golden fields of Mandalore. Join me, and we can rule the expanded universe as fan fiction author and guy who sits in his lap. <laughs> Eddie looked back at the group, who weren't his friends, but were the only people who shared his mutual interests. <laughs> Donald James silently mouthed, Don't do it. But Eddie turned his back on them. He left the store, climbed into Ken Miller's 1998 Toyota Corolla, the unofficial car of creeps, <laughs> and they never saw him again. Bobby couldn't stand it any longer. He gathered every bit of Star Wars merchandise in the store, every graphic novel, every action figure, every bit of plastic which was supposed to add meaning to an otherwise meaningless reality, and bought it. It cost him about two grand, but this was worth the peace of mind. And besides, because of his mostly sedentary lifestyle, he would not live long enough to worry about nor pay off his credit card debt. <laughs> they piled it onto the parking lot asphalt in front of the store. Stevie flipped alive his fuck communism lighter, put it to the edge of a Timothy Zahn book, and stepped back as the mountain of garbage took flame. They were free. The yoke of the universe they once cared for finally removed from their pimply backs. It was worth inhaling the fumes from all that burning plastic. As the bonfire grew, a man in a Lamborghini passed. He squinted at the activity in front of the store and scratched at the salt and pepper beard which rested atop a number of necks. Fucking nerds, he growled, and drove to the office where he resumed work on Howard the Duck 2. <laughs> the end. <laughs>